take it off. Yeah, it's right. Hey guys, welcome to It Figures, the toy and action figure podcast on itfigurespodcast.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Wait, who are you? I'm Pixel Dan. Whoa! And who are you? <laughs> Stina. Wow, I haven't seen you guys in a while. <laughs> it's amazeballs. I'm yeah, like, I'm here too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. You kind of blend in with the wall because it's kind of white over there, so it's just <laughs> a big pasty pimple on the side. I know, that's, 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 that's the problem. Pasty that's pimple. That's the problem being white. You get, you're always getting told you, you look like the wall. Sucks. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you always get told you look like the wall when you're white. Weird. Wait, wasn't the wall a wrestler in WCW? <coughs> like 99, 2000? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he was a big white guy, wasn't he? He was. He was a big So you racist. do look like the wall. Stereotypes. Man. <laughs> well, you know, we always start out at figures with news. We do start out with but news. But we're going to start out at figures with a different type of news. Uh oh. Uh, Pixel Dan is dead. As you can see, he died I, last night. I am actually deceased right now. And, uh, this so, isn't beating anymore. No, actually, uh, you know, I put out a video the other day saying that there were changes coming to the Pop Culture Network, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's the end of the world! Change, people fear change. And um, there is a change, and that is Pixel Dan is no longer going to be a senior editor of the Pop Culture Network. Correct. But... Don't freak out. I know everybody like no, put the matches down. <laughs> put just put the gasoline can back. He is still going to be a contributor on the site. That's right? right? That's right. And you're still, still gonna review toys. I'll still be around, I'm still doing videos, none of that's changing. You're still I'm goofing just, off on YouTube. That's right, all that doing all that YouTube stuff, yes. You'll still read the message board every once yes, in a while. Yes, I'll pop in the message you know, board. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And we're all still friends. We're no, all still friends. Nothing. We don't hate each other, but yeah, just one of the like Dirt was even talking about in his video. Life changes happen and things get rearranged and it just happens, and I just step down from my duties here so I can focus on some other stuff. And you're but just kind of tired of dealing with our website. That's right? right. Tired of dealing with the website. No, and I don't mean the people. Um, I mean the, the fact oh, that you get those 500 well, I was, internal server errors all the time. I was specifically and... going to talk about Rob Base, but yes. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. I love you, that, Rob. I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of goes with the territory. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's that's pretty much that. That's uh, in case anybody's been wondering or anything like that, which I don't think anybody really has. I, I think... Uh, like your announcement did kind of rile people up a little bit. But well, there are always conspiracies. Just, yeah, yeah. And yeah. to be honest, I did kind of flame that a little bit, you know, because <laughs> I didn't deny anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so other names of people who had worked here and left were coming up in certain conversations. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. And I, I, I didn't dispel any of the <laughs> connections being made or anything, so I did right. kind of... Uh, allow that to continue a little bit more than I probably should have, but but so so Dan is not leaving the Pop Culture Network. I'm not running away um, to never see you but, guys again. But he and I will not be making out on a weekly basis. No, anymore, not anymore. So. <laughs> I yeah, but a, you and I still can. Okay. Not <laughs> right. no, Wait. I was a little worried about that. They, so. they totally do. They totally do. <laughs> Great. It's called coworkers with benefits. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it works out? Yeah. Awesome. So anyway, I get paid too, right? Well, just your usual rate, okay. I guess. <laughs> Which is Dirt's tongue. <laughs> oh. Now, I'm good thing I have this one on. It's the red one. You can't see the blushing through the mask, Let's, let's keep going. All right. All right. Yeah, so let's do the toy stuff now. We'll get to the fun stuff. So have you been keeping up with toy news? I have. Because yeah. you haven't been doing this show. I, I can tell you that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to do this show for two weeks. I make my comments on the things I care about on Twitter, but that's about it. I <laughs> Like, the turtle thing's kind of been a big fiasco, obviously. Well, we can and, talk uh, about that for a minute, I guess. Yeah, of course, can... the, that's been huge news, is the Ninja Turtles movie. That's right. Well, th did you see that they officially said that Teenage Mutant is dropped out of the title yeah, now? It's, it's just, just called Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. What? And um, Michael Bay put out another announcement today where he's like, I swear to God, you guys are going to love this. Quit freaking out. Kevin Eastman's writing it. So... Well, what? it's funny that this you time <laughs> he remembered Kevin Eastman's name. Yeah. Because the first message he put out there said, we're working with one of the guys who came up with the turtles. And it's like, yeah. you don't know the guy's name? Yeah. Like, that's not a good sign. Yeah. Hmm. So, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, I, I always do my best to try to, like, keep a level head about this stuff and make a decision after I see the movie. But I totally understand the the... Uh, how easy it is to freak out when Michael Bay says things. Right. So, you know, I've got those same fears in the pit of my stomach that everybody else does. Because it's like with Transformers. Yeah. There, there are a lot of people that like Transformers. I Transformers. She there are a lot of us that did not. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Well, when the guy who's directing it is like, it's called a tra Transformer? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, you shouldn't be doing this movie. <laughs> 
I think my favorite thing about this whole turtle fias fiasco, though, has been all of the, like, comments and jokes people have been making about Michael Bay and, like, all the funny comic strips and stuff that mm. keep showing up. Like, that's that's at least making this enjoyable, you know? Like, I keep laughing at, like, the, the mocked-up trailer storyboards for the Michael yeah. Bay Presents Michael Bay Productions written by Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now amped with 100% you know? more yeah, awesome. And, like, and... like it's, it's, that stuff's funny to me, at least. So, we got that going, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying not to freak out too much. I got real mad when it was first announced, just like everybody else. But now that they're doing all this uh, damage control, it's been kind of more funny than anything. <laughs> well, and there was someone, I forget, I think it was Peter Laird, uh, who was the other co-creator of the Turtles. Oh, my gosh. He said some sort of comment like, you know, the idea of alien turtles, uh, uh, I guess, is neat or something. And people were like, what? You like this idea? And he's like, no, no, no. You, you misunderstood yeah, me. Yeah. I don't mean this idea. Like, if you, some, you made some other movie and you said there's a race uh, of aliens and they look like turtles, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But when you say it's going to be for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that doesn't work. You know? Peter Laird's first announcement was hilarious. Because, first of all, all those sites were like, Peter Laird's on board. And then you read his thing and obviously that's not what right. he said. Because he said... I'll give it to Michael Bay that there's a chance he can make this good. He probably won't make this good, but there's a chance. But then he goes on this, like, five-paragraph rant about how much he hates Venus de Milo, and I was cracking well, up. I was yeah. like, oh, that is that is awesome. <laughs> so, and did you see the drawing he did of the yeah. little alien yeah. antenna? Yes. And then Jim Lawson, who drew the comic for a long time, he drew, like, this alien spaceship that looks like a giant turtle uh, ad at walker yeah. thing with the side open and I the turtle aliens too. coming out. And... and then the voice actor for the movie Michelangelo freaked out on Michael Bay. And, oh, my gosh, it's been total chaos. You would think it's that been hilarious. if nothing else, Michael Bay would go, well, you guys have given me a lot to think about, <laughs> and I'll re-examine what we're doing. But instead, he's just like, no, 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 guys, it's going to be awesome. Which like, is you said that about Bad Boys oh, Two, Michael. I was Bay. gonna say that's the scary and thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> bad Boys Two wasn't awesome. <laughs> no, it was not awesome. I well, liked Bad Boys Two. Thank you, you would like Bad Boys Two. The problem is he made all those same promises to the Transformers fans about those movies over and over again. When Transformers 2 and 3 came out, he kept going, I promise, guys, you'll like it this time. I promise. <laughs> Trust me. And then Transformers 2 came out, and we saw Transformer testicles. You know? It's like... <laughs> what? What didn't you like? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so... There we go. That's the So there you go. There's some, there's some talk about that for all you guys. All right. Well, let's get on to some of the more recent current news. Uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation, we got more in the package pictures. This time we got Snake Eyes and Zartan. Yeah! And, uh, I don't know, like, I, the figures look fine. I mean, they, they really look like they're connected to the original line, mm -hmm. you know, so there's really no big, big deal about any of that. They still have the gigantic, oversized, ridiculous guns. They do, and it's because it's a movie year, so they like to add in those silly action features for the kids. On but, ugly cards. Which would make sense. But the though. figures themselves I do like. I yeah. think they're mostly good sculpts and the one thing that, that <clears throat> does kind of bother me a little bit is the whole snake eyes and the rock. I don't like the card backs at all. I think they look real generic, honestly. And I remember because they they actually showed the mocked up card back at Toy Fair and I remember just thinking that it looks so photoshopped and fake you know what I mean it's well, not like and it's not like they blend into yeah. the bottom it's just like <laughs> they, they're cut off where the logo is like you compare that to the stuff that they've been doing for like the 30th anniversary which has like all that beautiful artwork right. on yeah, it and everything big piece of artwork on the side oh of the character. yeah and these just look so I mean they look like stupid movie year stuff you know that's what always happens when movies come out the yeah. figures look good the, the packaging is not not so nice I don't like it Thanks a lot. He stole my ball. Stole the track ball. Well, my ball. Yes. Um, so anyway, overall though, I think I'm probably gonna buy a handful of these. I, I probably will too. I like the Cobra Commander quite I a bit. Not going to. You know, you don't like these. No. I do like the Zartan. Yeah, too. the extra heads are nice. Although I'm trying to figure out, like, what what Joe. these red patches are on the top of the heads. Like, are his eyes supposed to glow? I bet his eyes glow or something. Yeah, that's got to be what it is, because that just looks like a... Maybe... Well, he's maybe got like the, the, I mean, it's a putty face, it's a human face, it's a masked face, his regular face. But, I mean, did his eyes glow red in the first movie? I don't remember. Well, he didn't really do a lot in the first yeah. movie, either. He is a cyborg from the future. 
So, oh, is he? Oh, he's a Terminator. Michael Bay wrote this movie. <laughs> well, I that's know why that, the sequel's more awesome. I know that I am kind of excited about getting a three and three quarter inch Rock and a three and three quarter inch Bruce Willis figure. So well, I'm, I'm gonna buy both of those for sure. Like, I want to buy five Bruce Willis's so I can have like Red version Bruce Willis and Die Hard, Die Hard Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis and yeah. Hudson Hawk version Bruce Willis. <laughs> Maybe Moonlighting, put some hair on him version Bruce Willis. And then I want one where it's like him and a harmonica and like a Barles and James wine cooler. You know, sitting on the front porch because you used to do those commercials. So <laughs> ridiculous. Return of Bruno. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. McFarland Toys Walking Dead TV Series Two figures. Yeah. Yeah. Toy Wiz actually released early that there was going to be a set of four that you could pre-order, but their set of four doesn't match this set of five. There's five in this way. That yeah. that McFarland actually announced. So I don't know if Toy Wiz <laughs> just jumped the gun early and thought, well, this is what it's going to be, and they were wrong. Oh, that could change. But um, the big difference between the two was that Toy Wiz said there was going to be an Andrea figure. Oh. And and it would make sense that there's the RV zombie who she stabbed in the eye right. with the screwdriver. Right. And I don't know if they just guessed, well, we're getting that zombie, we're going to get her. Uh, or if they changed their mind or what the deal is. But basically, the five that they announced, uh, Rick Grimes in just like casual clothes. Yeah, Rick Grimes number two. So probably wearing like the red flannel shirt, you know, with the collars rolled up. Uh, we got Shane, and they're going to have Shane with the shaved head. Yeah. Uh, you've got Bicycle Girl Zombie, who's the zombie in the first episode. My phone, I didn't mute She's it. She's the one that's the, first that one? that's the first zombie that Rick finds. Uh, the little one that's like on the ground. She's like cut in cut half. Cut in half. Ah, and then he has why, to, did, uh, why did they call her the bicycle one though? Because uh, she was laying next to her bicycle. Like she had uh, had some sort of accident on the bicycle and whatever. And got cut in half. Yeah, I hate those terrible bike accidents where they cut you in half. Sucks. Hey, it happens. Sucks. You watch those uh, live leak wear... videos, you can see it happen. That's why you need a helmet. All right, then there's the well zombie. Yes. Which is the big fat zombie that got ripped in half. The big those bloated ones. one came out. Yeah, yeah. that one. was great. Oh. And then, of course, the RV zombie that got stabbed in the eye. So, so they announced those five as the set. Toy Wiz said there was going to be four with the Andrea. There's no Andrea, and there's an extra zombie, so I'm not sure exactly how that's... And we still don't have pictures either, do we? No, this yeah, is just they, uh, they, um... At Toy Fair, they didn't have these on display, but they had a poster up for Walking Dead Series 2, and they had, like, mocked-up images of all of them on this poster, and that's all they had. Um, was it, like, photos of the actors, or was it early sculpts? It was, or? They had early sculpts of, uh, like, the well zombie, but then it was, like, a photo of Shane and, mm. like, a photo of the, the bicycle zombie, so they, it, you could tell that they were real early in the production. Right. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm not sure I like about this... Um, First of all, we're getting another Rick already in the second wave. And I'm a little worried that at the rate they're going... Like, zombies are cool. I mean, obviously, the right. zombies are awesome. But at the rate they're going, it's going to take a long time to complete the core team of people. And I have a feeling that, you know, that's probably what people want to collect, is, like, the actual main mm -hmm. characters from the show. And if every wave is going to be Rick and somebody, Rick and somebody, Rick and somebody... Rick and Carl. You know? Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's going to take Rick in the forever. bathroom, yeah. just fresh out of the shower, <laughs> and then you got Rick covered in blood. And... Well, you know the one zombie I'm surprised I didn't make? Who? This little girl. Sophia Zombie. Sophia Zombie would be an awesome figure. Oh my gosh. They should take out one of the zombies. It's well, I mean, RV look how behind they are, though. I mean, the, the most recent thing in this whole wave is the shaved head Shane. Everything else is from, like, well, way maybe, early on. Maybe they do a pack later on as no. all the people turn into zombies. The well Zombie is season, episode two? Or not, I mean, season But they're two. both from, like, way at the beginning of season two, also. Like, the well Zombie was way at the beginning no, of season two. No, RV one was in the middle. Was it? <laughs> the RV zombie was when they were still out on the highway, wasn't it? Not at the no, farm. No, it's the one where... She... Maybe. Yeah, you're right. Because they, 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 they didn't really have any the zombie highway. attacks on oh, the farm. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, right. I was saying on the highway where yeah. they were looking for Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, see, this was... You're, you're right. Hmm. I was thinking that so, was So, farm. Rick was at the farm, and they were still out on the highway. Yeah, right. so that's, that's what it was. But, I mean, that's still first half of the season, so... So, anyway, I don't know. Um, I, haven't bought I any wasn't these. like I, just, I bought all the comic ones. The comic ones they looked cool because they I looked think. better. Yeah. I thought that the actors' likenesses were just terrible. Well, the other problem is the comic book ones are actually articulated pretty good, I think. And these are all um, they're pretty much static posed. Mm. And then the zombies all have weird action features, like the one they had like in the first wave, the, the head that explodes oh, in right. half and right. stuff like that. And I don't think I think with the comic ones they made them more like action figures. Yeah, but I don't know. Hmm. So, I don't know. Something to look for. Hmm. All right. Next up, Maddie Collector. Uh, we're getting the uh, Diamond Dallas Page, the fan. 
That's a uh, people's champ. Bang! Fan's choice. That's that is, people's champ. That's not the people's champ. That is the people's champ. But that's not the big news for Maddie Collector. Self high five. The big news for Maddie Collector is the letter that they posted. <laughs> this is yes. their little uh, acknowledgement that they keep messing up, I guess, mm -hmm. is the best way to. Uh, basically, they said, um, We've recently met with our suppliers, shared some of your concerns. Like all manufacturers, our production practices are proprietary, but we can tell you that a number of critical topics were covered, including new ideas to improve production quality consistency. Reviewing our materials, developmental processes, additional design review steps, more stringent testing, and supplementary technician training. So basically, they're acknowledging that quality has sucked yeah. in these uh, characters for a while. They've got a lot of issues, for sure. And they've got to work on it. Um, Guess how many people go to subscribe to uh, Master Universe next year? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they already dropped a lot. I guarantee you, next up. I mean, how many people of you? How many of you out there have a subscription right now? You wish you didn't have. <laughs> so, no, there's a lot of people. people are there's a lot of people that, yeah, there's a lot of people upset. So, uh, I think I think next year is going to be unless they have a, they're going to have something so big that's going to bring people in. It's, it's done. It's gone. It's starting to fall. No, it's it's not done. No, well, what did he say about they've already, they numbers numbers this year? They're already secured for 2013, and they've they're pretty good to go for 2014 already. So I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm sure they got plans and they got production going. But even the I'm yeah, I'm sure the sales are going to drop. It's going to be like, they probably will drop again. The subscription sales were down this year, but they were still way over the minimum they needed, which means they're fully funded for the next year. Um, but you're you're right. It's going to drop again. But that's just that's. I mean, there's been a lot of issues, so that helps with the waning interest. But also, I mean, interest does kind of wane over time too. So I think yeah, but it's, it's just not as not going to drop as low as you guys think it will. Be. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Well, how I many, think it's going to be scary. How many figures in the last year have there been problems with the production run? Um, you know, it hasn't really been quality stuff. Um, well, let's see. Photog had that cracked lens that a lot of people got. Um. What was another big issue? There was a oh, Snout Spout's uh, trunk started breaking on a lot of oh. people. The bendy trunk. Those are the only two like real quality things that come to mind. The biggest problem has been the delays. Well, uh, and they've had a lot of factory delays, which right. has delayed shipping on all the figures this year. And they need to do that shipping thing correctly. Uh, well, yeah, and there are, there were a lot of issues I remember where they said, "Well, we're not going to ship all the figures till we have them all in stock." And then people are getting shipping confirmation. And then they did and anyway. Then saying, yeah. And then they're saying, oh, we didn't get all stock. That's why you haven't gotten your shipping confirmation. Yeah. It's like, I thought you weren't doing that anymore. Yeah. Well, more, we said we weren't, but we are. So More importantly, customer service has been, like, the worst possible. They, uh... They, well, and that's a digital digital river. Like, a lot they have a new things. customer service system coming in place soon, and it's based in the U.S. Hmm. So, so did Digital different. River get fired? <laughs> no, Digital River didn't get fired. They actually, they, they apparently contracted a brand new people, a set of people that are just dedicated to customer service now, so we don't have to deal with Digital River's customer so service. So what that means to Mattel is Digital River <laughs> is undercutting you and summoning their work on somebody else and charging you more. You might think of just hiring your own people. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding, just, right? Just, just use Mattel. <laughs> I mean, there haven't been any more backward shoulders or two left feet or anything Nothing, like that really no, going on. Not like that in a while, huh? -uh. Everything's kind of been slow lately, I guess because of all the delays. So we might have problems, we just don't know about it yet because no one's getting their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus, they ship them out, they go to Nevada, oh to, my gosh, to California, to to California, to Nevada, to California, to Nevada, to Nevada, to California. Yeah. Yeah. I... <sighs> Twelve hops just to it move takes, two states. It takes like two and a half weeks to get something after you get your shipping notice because they just send it all over the country for some reason. It's it's terrible. It's a game. It's fun. It is, apparently. You get high points for how many places you can visit. <laughs> now, the other thing I wanted to, to ask you specifically about was yeah. on Maddie Collector doing the sale uh, that's been going on. It's been going on all month, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it goes through the end of, is it the end of this month or did it, is today the last day? 27th might have been the last day. Well, regardless, there's, they've been doing the sale all month long, and there are tons of Masters of the Universe figures. Yeah. And a, a lot of them are really deeply discounted. Like, uh, you know, the He-Man, Battle Cat, Skeletor, Panther, Panthor, sorry. Panthor, yeah. Uh, the ones that they say will always be for sale, or yep. they're always going to try to have stock on hand. Those are, like, really discounted. Yeah, they're 15 bucks, man, for the figures. 15 20. bucks for He-Man, uh, $10 off, basically, for Battle, Battle Cat or Panther. 
It's awesome. That's that's I like. I think that's good that they've got those. Like, um, but all then, the time. of course, they've had like all these other figures have been available: Battleground Evil Lynn, Demo Man, Guy Gore, yeah. Merman, Battleground Tila, Hordak. I mean, it's just like you go through all these characters that you thought you had your last chance, mm -hmm. so you ordered them, or you went on eBay and you paid more because you wanted to make sure you had them, <clears> and now suddenly here they are, and they're four bucks off, three bucks off if you order them. If, if you want to talk Chief about Chief Carnivus, Trap Jaw, Keldor, Leech, yeah, uh, Scareglow they had for a while, he's finally sold out. Tila, Tila sold out and immediately. Then unflocked Ears Moss Man. <laughs> it's Flocked Ears Moss Man, you can't get, but... Yeah, uh... I, if you want to talk about what's going to hurt subscription sales next year, it's this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because people are going, why should I get a subscription when I can just wait to the end of the year and they just put everything up discounted? Because they did the same thing last year. Yeah, because then you only have to go back and get a handful, five or six figures to but, finish yeah, it out. That that's yeah. that's and what it's, I'm doing. And like, I understand that like they say that this is just leftover customer service stock. You know, fine, that's whatever. But I totally understand why people would be upset about that because they, they're paying for the subscription. So they can guarantee they get these figures, and they're paying the full twenty-two dollars a figure, and then they turn around and get on Maddie Collector, where they have a month-long sale where everything's fifteen dollars and readily available. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> and if, if <laughs> that's aggravating. Are, if these are all leftover customer service stock, why are they still available four weeks later? I don't know. Why man. haven't they sold out? Yeah, I mean you would think they say, well, you know, it's only like five percent we keep back in order, you know, to fulfill problems with customer orders. Well, that five percent is still here. I think part of it is because they keep putting the same ones back in stock. Like, uh, they put Tila up for sale on this sale, and she sold out in like 10 minutes. But it's because they had never reissued Tila before. Mm. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, some of these guys, they just keep putting up for the sale, so everybody's had chances to get them. And then you've got some of these really hard... Like, Tila's one of the first-year figures, you know? She's really old, so I guess that was one that people were like, oh my gosh, it's a chance to get Tila, and boom, she was gone. But... A lot of this stuff was Chief, Car or Chief Carnivus. Was that last year or the year before? That was that was last year. Was it? Yeah, okay. that was 2011, be, yeah. early 2011, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, Merman was an old one though. I'm surprised he's in stock. He keeps coming back in and out though. Does he? That's like he's an awesome figure. The fifth time he's been. But he's one of the first year ones too. So I don't, it just seems a little weird that it uh, does. that it, all of those are still available. San Diego Comic Con Blazing Sword Voltron still on stock. Can I get rid of those things? Twenty one dollars. That's a great price too. I bet you're selling yours for more than twenty one dollars. It's a good thing you got a whole bunch of those as a reseller. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what Never he was again. I was saying that's what he was complaining about last time we were talking about this sale is that every time he buys all those San Diego exclusives, they end up putting them on these sales anyway. So it's paid. almost pointless. So why would you? And then I got to pay big money to get them shipped yeah, back here. And oh my god, it's almost it's pointless to it. pick them up at San Diego. So why would you ever support them again and buy a whole bunch of those? Not. I got burned two times in a row now, yeah. and I'm done. <laughs> Done. All right. Well, let's move on to Transformers, which is your second favorite toy I love line. Transformers. Um, actually, these are the Transformers Prime Cyberverse um, Commander figures, which are a little bit bigger. They're not the huge ones. They're not the tiny ones. They're kind of the in-between ones. Uh, but we've got Ironhide and Dreadwing. Uh, they had packaged uh, images that came out a while ago, but now here we're actually getting them out of the package, people playing around with them and posting pictures. I like most of these designs for Transformers Prime. I still don't like Optimus Prime because he's the wrong type of tractor trailer. He's still that movie type. Yeah. Sort of the, yeah. the short nose. But most of them have almost like classic G1 cool. Transformers faces. I like that too. Which to me is the big deal. Like I hated the movie where everything was like Chris cut design. You know, everything looked like scraps of metal thrown together. I like yeah. these that are more like that. It's, it's simpler. They actually have like faces. But yeah, I actually like them. Yeah. So I've actually bought uh, some of these Transformers Prime figures. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually buying Transformers again, if you can believe that. What? What's wrong with you? Uh, but what's the, wrong with you? <laughs> but I one mean, of the, what's right with you? One of the key things that they're doing, though, is they're including all sorts of weapons in these. Yeah. So whereas before, if they would have come out with Ironhide, it would have been just the car turns into the robot. Uh, but now they have like these big blaster guns with them. Dreadwing's got the big gun and the sword. That's kind of the the thing that's going on with the the Prime figures. And uh, um, I don't know. I'm I'm starting to like Transformers again. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's, good. it's like <laughs> guys, I got to admit it. Look, uh, I got I have a cousin who likes Transformers. You know, we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Now this one, Killen will probably get excited about this one, huh? 
Ultimate Collector Series Lego R2 D2. This thing is nope. crazy looking. Yeah, that's not really Why? a style. Though. I'm done with doesn't... Star Wars. I'm done oh, you're done with Star Wars. Oh, you're just done with Star Wars all together. Lego. I, it, it's well, done. this this is one of those uh, advanced kit things where you build like the big. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a foot tall. Big R2 D2. And it's massive. Uh, the leg can retract up into the body. Mm -hmm. and the front panel's open, and you've got like the little saw blade that comes out. You've got this little computer panel in there. The head can actually rotate. Uh, the little arms that come out that can like break into the locks on the space yeah. station and all that kind of stuff. You got this cool little nameplate with an actual yeah, R2D2 mini. Did, did they yeah. put the price? Because I'm sure it's six hundred dollars. Oh, it's probably gonna be very yeah, expensive. Didn't say. Doesn't but say. it also comes with this uh, dude who works for Lego, who's got the hipster beard and the flipped up hat. Like <laughs> yeah. he's got it flipped up. Oh, and Kyle, he's the guy that designed it. Kyle and Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Shop.lego.com is the only place you can buy it. Apparently, yeah, starting in May. It's gonna be expensive, and you know what? It's cool. If somebody wants to give me one, I'll take it. But <laughs> I would not pay. If somebody money. wants to give you one, I would not pay money for it. Really? Yeah. See, I, I just think it looks really it cool. It does look really cool. I mean, but I've always liked R two. I like the Astromechs in general. Yeah, you got that robot one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got the R two D two that moves around the floor and yeah, it'll play hide and seek that's and cool. all that kind of stuff. Cats hate it, but I love it. <laughs> Although that may be part of the reason why, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Just neat looking dude. It is neat. It's cool. I wish I had a voice box though. Oh yeah, if it actually had like in, like if the light lit up or something, does it light up? Well, I'm sure someone's gonna mod it. Yeah. I mean, you know that this is gonna come out, and the first thing people are gonna do is start putting LEDs in. It. <laughs> right. Exactly. I just That's paid $600. Cool. I'm going to do $400 worth of modifications <laughs> to it. All right. Dino Riders. Dino Riders. They're coming back now as part of the Fisher Price Imaginext Dinosaurs line. Yeah, these have actually been out for a while, haven't they? Um, it says they're new for 2011. I know I've seen these at Target because we talked about them on the forums. At well, Target point. has a whole lot of Imaginext Lots figures. of Imaginext stuff. Imaginext stuff is so cool. Like, yeah, But here's the problem. Like, um, Fisher Price does Imaginext, and then there's... Um, What's the company that does... Play School does their line. Mm -hmm. That's, um... I can't think of what they're called. But they do the Star the, Wars... The, like, Imagine X does the DC comic book heroes. Right. And then the other, uh, Play School or whoever, they do uh, Star Wars and I think G.I. Joe. Yeah, that's Play School. And, um, and those, you can buy two packs of the figures. And the figures, to me, are the coolest part of these lines. Mm -hmm. and, but the DC ones, they don't do that with the figures. You have oh. to buy, like, the little car that comes with the guy or, like, a little piece of playset that comes with the guy. I remember... It's a uh, lot more expensive. Sometimes, Target had little single packs of those for, as exclusives for a while because I bought the, the, the Two-Face uh, and the Mr. Freeze because I thought they were cool. Well, they don't have them but, now. Yeah, usually you do have to buy the big playsets to get them. Yeah, that was Target. They had them... Toys R Us. Did I say Toys R Us? I meant Target. Target had them as exclusives. Target has a huge selection. They have a whole aisle dedicated to this yeah. stuff. I think it's awesome, though. I know that like when I have kids, I'm totally buying them Imagine X stuff <laughs> just because I want to play with it. Which is going to be any day. Which any day now. Well, and sure. Dino Riders is kind of one of those like it's forgotten sweet. lines that always kind of ends up on those lists of, man, I wish they would do more Dino Riders. Right. You know? Right, and it's like, yeah. oh, I haven't seen Dino so, Riders in forever. Wait, okay, wait. Who... Who owns? I wonder if it's actually the same thing, or if they were just able to use the name Dino Riders because the co the copyrights had lapsed or something on it. Well, who, Fisher Price is part of a different. Yeah, who who owns Fisher Price? Because I'm curious. Who who did Galoob did? Was it Galoob that did Dino Riders, or was it um, was it Fisher Price is part of Mattel? Right. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's look up Dino Riders. I can't. I I want to say it was Galoob, but I don't know if I'm right. Welcome to. Oh, Dino not affiliated Riders. with Mattel. This this is a fan site that says not affiliated with Mattel. Okay. So Mattel. Mattel owned Dino so, Riders. And Mattel owns Fisher Price. So there so you these go. These are actually so licensed. these are. Yep. These are. These are. Cool. Full so it's Dino one Riders. of those things where Mattel still have the name, and they're like, let's do something with this, and bam. Legitimate. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, they are kid-centric, so it does look, you know, a little chunkier, you know, a little friendlier, but it is totally the robotic arms. He's got the headset, you know, the headdress they're thing cool, on man. for controlling his little dinosaur brain. He's got the spot on the back where the people can sit and ride them, you know. So and they I mean, shoot stuff. That's so, I mean, fun. I... I had no idea that Dino Riders had returned, and there they are. They are back. They are as imagined. They have. They had this huge Brontosaurus one at Target. That just looks so cool, and it's got all this real shiny silver armor on it and everything. Every time I walk by it, I'm like, and how much was it? Kind of want that. I'm sure it's way too expensive. <laughs> it's kind of like free. Yeah, <laughs> or free. 
You know, the next time a tornado comes through town, you should just drive out there and see. <laughs> How's uh, the security out here? We are looting. <laughs> yeah, looting Target for their dino riders. <laughs> like it's Black Friday. Because <laughs> we loot on Black Friday. Oh, we don't? We do. <laughs> well, we do this year. <laughs> we do now. All right, Miracle Productions is coming out with a vehicle Voltron set. Guess they're going to do what Mattel's not, huh? Yeah, basically. Well, this is kind of similar to how they did the Voltron... 25th, mm -hmm. 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary uh, sets. This is a deluxe, uh, what is this, like two feet tall? Yeah, it's big and it's got a bunch of die cast metal parts, which is awesome. 13 inches tall, okay. 13 inches. So a little over a foot. But, um, that's pretty good, though. That's but two fifty nine ninety nine. Two fifty nine, And it's because it's all that die cast stuff. That's why it's so expensive. But it is, like, uh, what does it say, like 48 different pieces or something like that? Or 48 different vehicles, but over 50 pieces. Because there's stuff that, you know, pops off and missiles and whatnot. And, and they're all made, so, you know, they had different combinations of them. You could break them apart, and different ones would fit together right. on top of each other to right. make different vehicles and whatnot. And so it's made to do all of that. That's crazy. But two fifty nine ninety nine. I'll tell you what, though, if that was Lion Force, I would highly consider it. A two, you'd pay. I, I would highly consider it. I'm not saying I would jump out and buy it, <laughs> but I it would be very tempting to get a new diecast metal Lion Force Voltron. Just, you don't agree, though. She's like, you can't spend two hundred. <laughs> That's not coming out of my bank account. There, there's just too many parts, man. They why it was a bad idea of vehicle Voltron. <laughs> And he was the first incarnation of Voltron, too. It's a little too much. They got smart by the third Like, one. you needed a whole fleet Lions. of vehicles. That's the way to do it. That's a little it. much. Lions. Yeah, what about, what about six-armed freak Voltron Gladiator two? Voltron? Yeah. Voltron 2? He's so goofy looking, I want him. He but, is so goofy. I, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, again, if if I saw it somewhere for, like, 80 bucks, I'd probably yeah, buy it. Yeah, yeah, same here. Like, if I ever come across this thing for cheap... Which probably won't happen. <laughs> oh, but if sure. I did, I would probably pick that up. Because yeah. that's pretty neat. I'm not even a big vehicle do. Voltron fan, but that's still, it's still, I think it's neat that they're doing that. Right. I mean, you'll probably find it for like free. Well, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Although, for if free. you pre order now, you get a limited edition full die cast blazing sword. Ooh. That's so. kind of cool. So you might want to get on it now if you want that. All right. I'm gonna go pre-order this, Christina. No, you're not. <laughs> he has to. And then <laughs> finally, the last piece of news here: yeah. picks of the new Men in Black Three action figures. Uh, this is from uh, Big Bad Toy Store. Has these posted? Uh, our user One Nerd uh, One popped up these links onto our forums, so you can go there and see them. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily you have to be a fan of the Men in Black franchise, but I think some of these sculpts are actually very well the done. Sculpts are the okay, the bodies look a little weird. They're beefy, they're but the faces, beefy. the paint jobs aren't great. Like like the you could tell the sculpt's pretty good. It needs a better paint job. That would make a huge difference. Like, yeah, look at it doesn't even have glasses. a mouth. It yeah, it, it, well, yeah, yeah, there's just no paint to highlight. He's a frowning face. But uh, the three and three quarter scale, they look cool next to the Avengers and the Thundercats <laughs> figures. Yeah, I was gonna say next to Lion, though, they actually look pretty good. And he's an alien. There you go. So the Men in Black running into Lion, though, kind of fits. I mean, you could make a like. Yeah, you story. almost want to just get J and K just to randomly put on your shelf with your three and three quarter inch collection. Just have the Men in Black hanging out with them. <laughs> I mean, they make good Secret Service. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I don't know about any of the other... I don't know, the aliens are weird looking. Like, but... Would you buy the aliens? No. I don't know, like... I don't generally buy action figures for movies like this, but... I mean, sometimes. They suck. But, yeah, normally they're not great, and... The aliens in these movies are so goofy, but they're supposed to be goofy. I don't know. I probably Let's... would buy a J&K. J&K, but... yeah, they're, they're gonna be the coolest ones in that whole set. I think I come out with a cool neuralizer accessory because I do want. Well, there's he's got. Uh, I mean, like one that we can play with. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, you mean like for real one? Like a real oh, neuralizer, like a six-inch one. That Are they're they gonna around? make an actual Just neuralizer. Just go to shoppcn.com and they'll have one there. You sell sure. real neuralizers? Oh yeah. Send me a thousand dollars. I'll send you schematics on how to build a real one. If you pre-order, you get a diecast blazing sword. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's right. That's a heck of a deal. All right, well, that's going to do it for news. We'll take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, we will answer some of the lingering fan corner questions that you guys left for Pixel Dan that he hasn't answered because he hasn't been here in a couple weeks. How dare you. How dare I. But now you'll get your answer, so stay tuned. Woo!
Hey guys, it's Killen, and I'm here to discuss a new show coming every Monday on the Pop Culture Network. It is the Video Game Lizard Show. Every week we'll discuss the news relating to video games, we're going to talk about some releases, and have a short discussion on whatever random topic we think is relevant that week. It's going to start myself, and of course, I'm not Dirk. So be sure to check us out on bglosers.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Yay! <laughs> okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, we're, welcome back to the show. Stop fighting, we're back on. Oh. Welcome back to the show here for the fan corner. Here are some questions for Mr. Dan over here. Um, some things that you're an expert on. Yeah? That you're going to know the answer to. Oh, we'll that see. some of us don't. We'll see. First up, the Rook. My question from last week got missed, so I'll post a new question. And this was a couple weeks ago. This is March 7th. <clears throat> Oops. Do you think Mattel will keep the $20 per figure price for subscribers of the 2013 Masters of the Universe Classic subscription? Do you think subscribers will get hit with a 10% price increase? I think you will get hit with a price increase, and I think that the ones on the site will get even more expensive. Oh, you wow. think they'll go above 22 yep. Like 25 Probably. 24 25 I wow. think so. I think I think because they didn't raise the prices for like three years that they're going to try to play catch up now. Hmm. So you think sucks. every year they should have added a dollar? I, I don't know if it's going to happen every year, but I'm willing to bet that at least within the next year they're going to go up another dollar or two. So do you Which think by... Ridiculous. That's just an assumption. I don't know that for sure. I just... That's what I think is going to happen from... That's just, How long till they hit what he's been told. Oh, gosh. If they had $30, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. <laughs> he's done. Oh, she's but already you know made but the proclamation. It sucks because, you know, it's not like it's just Matty Collector, though. You walk into the toy stores and six-inch action figures cost $20 a piece. It's crazy. Like, the Marvel Legends figures are, like, eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. you know? It's like, this is stupid that that's the normal price for an action figure now. But, I mean, gas prices are high, and they need gas to run their machines, and, you know, they should all go that, green. All yeah, they should go stuff. electric. Go green. Make my toys out of aluminum. And do you think, <laughs> do you think maybe that be weird. Because, um, because the prices are going up, you know, everything's getting more expensive, mm -hmm. is it even... Less likely there will ever be a Castle Grayskull. Oh yeah, for sure. The, the problem is, um, Toy Guru has already said that they're not going to do a Castle Grayskull unless they can do it right. Which means they want to make it not just a facade, they want to make a full playset that's like four-sided, that you can open up and do stuff with. And he says that if they do that, it's probably going to cost like $400. <laughs> And that's where the problem is, is because how many people can they really get to commit $400 to a giant playset like that? Okay. This guy, probably. <laughs> but, yeah, that's rough. That's harsh. And this you know? guy two years ago, but not now. <laughs> yeah, well, I cared. <laughs> you better start saving for Castle Grayskull now. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. Honestly, I'll be real surprised. But would you Grayskull. want a four-sided place? You know, I would. I I'm guess, happy with the open-up clamshell yeah, like, with one floor in the middle. I think a full-on playset would be awesome. But I would also be totally happy with just a facade or a clamshell one. Just something I can display with my figures. I'd be totally cool with that. But, I mean, people people really seem to be divided on that, the whole Castle Grayskull debate, because there's a lot of people that are like, well, I don't want it unless it's a playset. So you just really run into that. It's just that, that whole logistics thing, which was an awesome word. But, <laughs> you know, Mattel's looking at it going, well, that's going to cost us a ton of money to make. Can we actually make money back on it if we do that? Because mm -hmm. this is just a really small online-only collector's line. It's hard to commit money to something as big as a playset, you know. They have a hard enough time with vehicles, apparently. <laughs> so. And I always loved the original Castle oh, Grayskull because too, it man. was a playset and a carry A carry case, yeah. I mean, that was that, that was the genius of it. Yep. And for me, if if you're gonna remake a Castle Grayskull, it should be a carry case. That'd be awesome. And a, you know, it's something that closes completely, and then you flip open to play with. I'd be totally cool with that. And you would turn Absolutely. it around if you want to display it, or you open it up and play with it. Yeah, but the idea of a carry case was the fact that you actually played with them. These are like collector line. Yeah, but who toys? doesn't play with their Masters of the Universe classics? You. I do. Well, Damien, because he leaves them on the box. Damn. Oh, oh, that's right. He gets. <laughs> He gets the boxes sealed <laughs> in plastic. Apparently, I burned them hard. You can't even play with the box because the box is in a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They oh, double box them bad boys. That's right. Respect. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> wow. 
All right, next up, Weaver27 says, Hey guys, I'm sorry this question is not about toys this time, but maybe Pixel Dan and Stina can help me out on this one. Since you two are Disneyland or Disney World experts, I'm going to Disneyland on September of this year, 2012. Last time I've been there was 2000. That was 12 years ago. Could you two help me out as to what's new and what have been taken out of Disneyland since then? Disneyland. What, what have been taken out of Disneyland? <laughs> Um, that was our first time going to Disneyland. Yeah, I was so. going to say, I'm not as familiar with land well, as I am world, but... Um, did they... Where did Pixie Hollow go? Pixie Hollow's in Disney... World, world or land? World, world. No, yeah, it's Disney. in both. They're putting it in world now. It's already in Disneyland. So Pixie Hollow I don't know how much there. you care about Pixie Hollow, <laughs> but that's new. They, that's all Tinkerbell stuff. They were hey, they um, revamping... Um, it's a small world when we were there, yes. so that one is completely redone. Oh, I know the big thing that they're doing that's new. They were redoing Toontown. A lot of Toontown is changing because they're expanding um, Fantasyland. Um, and they were putting in like a Little Mermaid dark ride yes. and a bunch of stuff like that. So by the time you go, a lot of it right now is all still walled off because they're doing like, this is like one of the biggest pieces of construction they've done there in years because they're basically just adding on to the park again. So they're, they're, a lot of that might be actually open by the time you go in September, but I'm not sure when that's all supposed to actually open up. But that's about I, all yeah, I know. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> it. And they got rid of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which nope. is why I won't go anywhere. That's in Disneyland still. Oh, yeah. they still have it in Disneyland? Yep. Disneyland. Yep. They got rid of okay. it. World. I will only go to Disneyland yeah. from now on. Yeah, that ride's awesome. Or Disney Tokyo, <laughs> just because I want to go to Tokyo. World? Yeah, they replaced it with the Pooh ride in Disney World. The Pooh ride was fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... Every woman wants Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Orko wants to know what's your birthday? April 25th. What's your birthday? March 10th. What's your birthday? June 2nd. I'm July 23rd. There you go, Orko. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you okay? Uh, Alba Trey is wanting to know: Have you ever made a completely custom figure? You've customized before. I know you paint a lot of things. Oh, you mean like from scratch? But yeah, he wants to know using out of all hot glue and or or ripping apart toys and putting toys back together. No, I am not that talented. I've done minor re-sculpting onto action figures that I'm customizing. Uh, I have never done anything from scratch. But it's usually just like hair or yeah, like a jacket yeah, or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, mostly I swap parts and repaint. That's the best I can do. Hmm. Um, hey, just a quick question. When will Scotty be doing more from the command center? Uh, you're going to have to ask him for sure. But I'm... <laughs> Scott is... I don't think he's going to be, <laughs> to be honest. But you, you might want to ask him for sure. That um. dude, um... He doesn't own like he's got his Power Ranger stuff anymore, does he? <laughs> oh, that's true. I don't know. No, because he keeps getting uh, he keeps getting new ones from that guy. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, he might be doing more. I don't I just, know. I just know if that you, if today is Tuesday and you ask him on Wednesday, he'll say yes. If you ask him on Thursday, he'll say no. If yeah, you ask him on Friday, he'll true. say yes. So yeah. you know, who knows? Yeah, but you, I can't speak for Scott. You'll have to talk to him. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> you used to be senior editor, and you'd be able to answer yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I cannot ask official uh, answer official PC and business questions. Please refer these to Killen at popculturenetwork.com. To which I will tell you if it's two cents a day. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. All right, Yoda soup. My question is this week: Have you ever purchased a figure solely for the accessories included with it? Oh, what's? Let me think. There, the, it's got to be yes. There's, I'm I, sure that I have. Well, I know there are times that we've been at, um, like, what's the show in St. Louis? Uh, toy Man. Toy Man. Or things like that where you see a toy and it's only like two bucks or whatever. And you're like, I don't really care about the figure, but I want that piece yeah. that's with it, you know. Um, and especially stuff like, you know, Hellraiser figures come with like a little Hellraiser box. And you're like, yeah, I'll pay the five bucks or whatever and what? rip out the little Hellraiser box. When I was real big into the customizing thing, I did that a lot. Because if there was some specific accessory or piece, I thought would make a great accessory or piece for what I was working on, I would certainly buy a full action figure just to get the accessory out of it. Uh, I don't know. I can't really think of any specific examples, though. But I'll just say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, final question from Count Marzo. Hey, Marzo. Um, got one from Pixel Dan. When you get a new figure and you want to do a review of it, how important is it that you have something that you can do a comparison time for? <laughs> TM. <laughs> does that make the figure more worthwhile for you when you have a vintage one too, or does that take away from the new character figure that doesn't have anything to compare to it from back in the day? Um, you know, it's not. 
I'll tell you, it's gotten more important, and that's only because it's become expected of me. Um, I like comparing my stuff to the old figures. I always have. Even back in the 2002 days, before, way before I was doing video reviews, when I was buying the He-Man figures, I always took pictures of them with the old ones side by side and posted them online and made sure everybody saw them. Big dork. I've been doing comparison time for years. Uh, I just, I don't know, I, I like doing that. I like comparing them to the old ones. Um, but if it's a new toy that doesn't have an old one, no, that doesn't really bug me. It doesn't bother me. I just... For me, it's kind of like if you're in a store and you're buying it, in your mind you're comparing it to something when you're buying it. There's very mm -hmm. few toys that you see and, and you go, oh, well, this was created in a vacuum and has no other toys that came before it that has any sort of impact on it. Like, everything you see is like, oh, that reminds me of uh, whatever from a couple years ago. Or, yeah. You know, this reminds oh, they did that line uh, 12 years ago. It kind of looks, you know, like they brought it back or something. Right, right. And so I think that if you're buying it and you're making those connections, then when you do a review, it just makes sense that it you does. compare it. Yeah, and it, it's just natural. It just comes to you naturally to kind of compare it. You compare it in your mind, so you kind of want to share that with everybody else. But, Which reminds me, I bought another <laughs> Voltron to do comparisons oh, with gosh. when I we got, get the next line. Yeah, so. I, I have a couple new ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so I, it's like, I rearranged my shelves the other day. I need to take a picture of it to show you, because I rearranged my shelves, and I just have one shelf now that's just dedicated to all my mm. Voltrons. So I just have this whole shelf with just all these different sized Voltrons all over it, and I was like, I might have too many of these now. I think I've gotten a little carried away. But I'm still trying <laughs> to get a Jolly Bee Voltron. Which oh is yeah, like the Philippine fast food restaurant, whatever yeah. it was. I've seen that. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one show up on eBay. But I've, I've seen, seen pictures, it once, really. Yeah, and it was going for a stupid, you know, hundred and eighty dollars. Expensive, or something. dude. You have to play your cards right sometimes with those. Find deals. So. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for the fan corner. Yeah. So thanks for coming for your. Thanks for having me. For your me. final, not final episode. Thanks for having me. I mean, it me. is your final, but you'll be back someday. I'll be anyway. around. I'll be around. I won't be good. Don't, don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> but, so, oh, wait, here's another question. Is it true you guys are getting divorced and that's why you're not Me and Dirt? No, you and Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> me and Dirt are divorced. So. No, our, first our anniversary is coming up. Yes. That's right. Yes, three, three year anniversary. That's right. Play to the cameras. Play to the cameras. <laughs> So feel free to send them gifts <laughs> for our anniversary. For, for their anniversary. Christina really wants Toynami Voltron for <laughs> our three-year anniversary. If anybody or, out there or has that. No, she wants she tickets wanted, to Disney World. I think she was talking about a pile of cash, too. Where you? Oh, yeah! <laughs> a briefcase full of money. Uh, send us a briefcase full of money. That's the only gift we will accept. <laughs> I'll buy you something if you send me some money. <laughs> Awesome. So definitely, if, if something breaks with Masters of the Universe, of course, you know, if Toy Guru gets mugged and beheaded for logistics purposes, oh you know, something God. like that, we, we'll have to have you back on. That's to, right. I'll, to I'll be here that. to report on the ongoing Toy Guru saga. So, <laughs> but otherwise, all right, well, that's going to do it for this week. Awesome. So don't forget, if you want to contact any of us, you can always come to the popculturenetwork.forums. Uh, pop culture pop culture dot, forums. dot forums yes right. that's what we call them the dot forums uh, also you can send us a voicemail it's area code 217-953-4025 what's that number again? it's area code 217-953-4025 I'm just going to start calling in week, actually. <laughs> you can do that hey guys I, I'm drunk and just want to see what you're doing why my you, question is for why, killing why did, are you still a big jerk why didn't you click <laughs> Every week. And just remember, we don't reply back. <laughs> I will tell you, still am. Thanks. <laughs> and don't forget to go to shoppcn.com, where you can buy great toys and video games and comic books. And each order that you place will be expertly packed and shipped by none other than the Lord Killen himself. <laughs> Mr. Digital River myself. <laughs> Mr. Digital River. I don't River. think you should call yourself that. <laughs> I think nope. Digital River That's going to be a bad impression. Mantis Killen. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, the, the new U.S. Mantis revised Killen. Digital River. U.S. Not okay. the old. Not the old one. Oh, Digital River 2.0. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.